I'm a licensed amateur radio operator that lives in a homeowners association. I comply with the spirit of those rules, but I don't let them keep me from communicating all around the world. I can communicate on ham radio locally, regionally, and globally. I also review products from time to time, but when I first reviewed the Chameleon Antenna Cha Portamast, I was thinking of using it on an occasional basis. Now understand, I don't sink several hundred pounds of concrete in my backyard for any product unless I do intend to use it. This was a serious commitment. So I accepted that Chameleon Antenna produced another great product. It fit into my use case. I was interested in it, but I've gone far beyond the original thought of occasional use, and now it has become my station reference antenna. And today I want to share with you why I've changed change my mind and take you through the process of how I've made this completely stealth here at the HOA. Some people that have watched my videos on the Chop Portamast so far have said this makes sense to them even if they don't live in an HOA. For those of you that think this might have application and you do live in an HOA, the first question you must ask is, does my HOA permit the permanent use of flagpoles? And if the answer to that is yes, this might be a good fit for you. Now, I already had a 73-foot N-Fed Stealth in my yard. It went out to the front road over top of a sidewalk, so it could be seen by people. So I've decided to pull that down and take the wire backyard up to my Cha Portamast. It just makes it that much more stealth. But to make it completely stealth, I can't take my Cha Hybrid Mini in this case and put it on a Cha Spike and put it in the ground because then it's visible. And then I've got to worry about my lawn guy running it over. So I chose to put it in this utility box. I did this on my other wire antenna. I've left that box on the side of the house in the event that post tropical storm or hurricane, I need to put up that other antenna, at which point in time the people from the HOA will be lining up begging to talk on my radio. But for now, I've put this new box on the back wall of the house, and now I'm going to take you through all the steps to build it out to hide your Cha Hybrid Micro or Mini. I went with a Mini because I'm hoping someday somebody sends me an amplifier to use with this. We'll come back to this box build in a minute, and even though I'm not giving you step-by-step -step instructions, I think you're pretty much picking up what's actually happening, and we'll get that to the finish line. In addition to being stealth, I want to talk to you about how versatile this antenna system is with the Cha Portamast and the Cha Hybrid Mini with a 30-foot wire. It's only 30-foot for me because I have a small backyard, and based on where the antenna's on the house, where it's attached on the back corner, and where the Cha Portamast had to be located, that's the longest wire I can could get up. The longer the wire, the better for you. This is working for me. It is Tuesday evening, 7.30 p.m., and Hurricane Adalia is coming up the coast of Florida. We're in a pretty good space where the track was coming. We're going to be fine, but I am paying attention to the Hurricane Watch Net. I've got my FX4CR dialed into 14325, and the Hurricane Watch Net is occurring right now. I'm listening to a local repeater system, NI4CE. It's a connected repeater system of five repeaters here in the Tampa Bay area, and we have a Skywarn net control going on there right now, and then I've got my SDS100 scanner. So um, we're in a safe place. The back windows are boarded up because the storm is going to blow at us pretty hard from the south, wind coming from the south. So we're protected. And I'm listening just in case there is some event that I need to be aware of. That said, I needed to pull down the child portamast and I needed to get that 30-foot wire put away. Let me roll a clip in here and show you how I pulled that off. This is how versatile it is. So just go into the backyard, you can see that I quickly take down the portamast. It's a interlocking system and you just twist and uh, lock as you're extending and unlock and twist as you're coming down. Let's respectfully put that flag away and once that's done, come back and grab the chop portamast and just pull it right out of the in-ground concrete sleeve. Let me spin the camera over here and show you what I've done in this utility box. I have taken a chameleon winder and I made sure there was room in the utility box to put the winder. And I've cut a slit in the bottom side of this box. So once I wind up the 30 foot wire and I put this winder back into the box, I can just leave the wire attached to the Cha Hybrid Mini 
wrap it around the box, tuck the winder in place with all the wire. When my storm passes, which will be probably sometime by midday or late day tomorrow, I'll be able to put up the chop port mast and my wire again. It's just reverse these steps and instantaneously I have a flag flying in the backyard and a stealth antenna mast. So it's stealth and it's versatile. That's what I like about this setup. Let's get back to building out the box. I used the two by six just like a drill press. In other words, I wanted that bracket to hold still and not spin while I was trying to drill the hole for the bottom stud of the Cha Hybrid Mini. Let's get that off, clean it off, and get it back into the polymer case. And we're going to start marking some holes. We'll start with marking the hole where the bottom stud of the Hybrid Mini is going to go. And then you're going to see me drill just a really tiny hole there. That tiny hole is just a pilot hole. And then I'll go in with a larger bit. These markings that I'm putting on there right now, that will be where I put Tapcons into the concrete wall. So I'm just marking all the holes in the bracket. Very straightforward. Let's pre-drill the bottom hole. And then we'll go in here with a larger bit. The pre-drilling of the pilot hole is just to keep the larger bit from spinning and going off target. So we're going to change over to a larger bit. We'll get the larger hole there, and then that will accept the bottom stud of the Cha Hybrid Mini. All straightforward, right? We're going to do the same thing on the top here. We're going to drill a much larger hole with a hole saw that's going to allow that shackle to protrude through the top of this, and then that will allow us to attach our wire and have strain relief to the top side of this case. One more pilot hole on the bottom and one more larger hole with the hole saw. And that's where I'm putting a right angle adapter to go through the bottom of this polymer case for my coax feed. And then we're ready to dry fit everything together here on the bench top before we go to the backyard and install this on the wall. I could purchase an antenna already in an external case, but because I like the flexibility of being able to take the Cha Hybrid Mini somewhere else portable later, if I change this configuration, that's why I went with it. I'm stretching out my wire and then raising the flagpole slash antenna mast so I can see exactly where I need to place this box on the back wall. I do have about 18 inches of shock cord connected to the very top of the port mast right at the bottom of the first section and that gives me the flex in my wire and here i am just simply tensioning things up a little bit and making sure i'm happy with placement as i drill that first pilot hole once i drill that first pilot hole everything is pretty much set from this point forward i have three holes to drill two at the top one in the bottom left and then in the bottom right remember i have that metal l bracket that metal l bracket is holding all the weight or the tension, so to speak, of the Cha Hybrid Mini as the wire is pulling it away from the box and away from the house. So that metal bracket is the strength of this setup. So all you see me doing here is drilling my three holes, two in the top, one in the bottom left, and then three holes actually in that bracket. I do need to remove the Cha Hybrid Mini to get to that bracket. But again, here I'm just dry fitting everything and that allows me to make sure that I am plumb and level. And yep, this is the right place to use a torpedo level instead of a four foot level. If you're installing that port mast in the backyard in a concrete pillar, you want a four foot level. Torpedo level will work just fine for this application. Of course, you have to use the appropriate hardware for your installation. By now, you've probably figured out I'm drilling into concrete block stucco. So I'm using a hammer drill. It's the only way to easily get through concrete, actually block. And then I'm using Tapcon screws. Those Tapcon screws are specifically manufactured to work with concrete. They grip and they are strong. And now with the box on the wall, the Cha Hybrid Mini back in the box, we're ready to go to the next step. Here we are next day after I've had a chance to sleep on my antenna installation and we'll talk about what else I did. But first, there's a mystery black 
box with a chameleon label on it. Well, you'll see this in a future video. It's not on the chameleon website yet, but you might have a guess at what this is. There is a similar unit that goes into the shack and allows me to connect various antennas to that inside unit, send a signal out to this black box on the wall, and guess what? We can tune antennas for any rig, including those that don't have internal tuners. Stay tuned for that video to come. As I slept on my antenna install overnight, I realized there was room in this outside utility box to add the winder. That wasn't part of the original plan. It just worked out that way. And now that you know it, you can actually plan for it. So you're going to see me in a second cut a slit in the bottom left-hand corner of the plastic box once I open it up. And that allows me to take my wire, leave it connected to the Cha Hybrid Mini and keep it on the winder and not have to disconnect anything. So I can wind it up on the wire and I can just loop the wire a little bit around the outside right edge of the box, close up the box. And it's good for any time I have inclement weather, i.e. category three, category four, category five, hurricanes coming my way and I want to take my flagpole slash Chob Portamast down or I want to take the Chob Portamast to a POTA activation or for field day. So it lets me tidy things up here in the box and be completely self-contained. I can wrap this up in a matter of minutes and when I go to set up again I can take the winder out of the box and be set up again in a matter of minutes. And that's what we'll show you here next. With the Chameleon test unit attached to the wall, now I just need to swap my cable around so I can operate this tuner from the shack. I'm using my FX4CR, which is a tiny handheld transceiver. It goes up to 20 watts. It does not have an internal tuner. With this new Chameleon unit from the shack, I was able to tune up my 30-foot wire going from my Cha Hybrid Mini up to my Portamast. I was able to test a long wire going from the top of the tuner itself up to the Portamast. I was was able to test out the Cha Empass 2.0 and on and on. This tuner tuned everything I threw at it. Remember to make sure that you always waterproof any of your coax outside and that's what I'm doing now with this tape that just stretches and seals everything off so that you make sure you don't get any water intrusion into your coax and really mess with your SWR. I'm going to go through the breakdown one more time and to set it back up, it's just the reverse. They were a mirror image of each other. I know I've gone over it already, but while I talk through the reasons why this is now the station reference antenna and why I highly recommend it, I just thought I would show this to you one final time. I spend more time walking around than I actually do putting up the Chob Portamast and installing my antenna wire. Why did I go this route instead of an actual flagpole antenna? Well, first of all is the cost of the flagpole antenna. Before I go to that, this was my first attempt at winding this up. I woke up in the morning and thought I wanted to make this modification to that box. I'm doing just the circular wind around that winder. You saw me earlier in the video doing the figure eight and that works a little bit better. But why the Chob Portamast and a separate antenna wire? Why not a flagpole antenna, which I'm allowed to have here in the HOA? I'm going to say cost. Those flagpole antennas can be $1,500, $2,000 or more by the time you get an external tuner out there and a whole setup in your shack to control it. The Chob Portamast is a couple of hundred dollars and then you can put whatever antenna on it that you want. So for me, this was a more cost-effective way to get a flagpole in the backyard here at the HOA as well as adapt to a number of different types of antennas. Portability. If I go with a flagpole antenna that costs me two grand, it's in the ground and it's never moving away. When I want to go operate portable here, if I want to go POTA, if I want to operate somewhere for field day, I can do that. And finally, it would be chameleon quality. The quality of chameleon is known to many of us who have experienced it ourselves with antennas that we have purchased and used. And that to me is something that's very important as I set this up in the back 
backyard. I'll do a final review of the Child Portamass, but I'm going to tell you right now, the quality is phenomenal. You won't find much better than what Chameleon offers in this Chop Portamast. So that's my thought on this. This is why I put this as my station reference antenna. I have flexibility, it's cost effective, it's high quality, it's versatile for me. It's the station reference antenna here at HOA Ham QTH. I hope you found this beneficial. Talk to you soon, friend. 73.